I just remember sitting on my kitchen floor and just in a, a puddle of tears um, and really thinking, how could I lose this all now? when I did feel like we were gaining momentum. And I called Carrie and I said, Carrie, can I come and meet you? And I sat across her desk, nervous, with my plan in place. And she was wearing my jewelry when I walked in, uh, which was a really good first sign. And she had this warm smile on her face and she gave me a Texas-sized hug. Um, and I knew right away that she was my kind of person. And in tears, explaining to her where I was, I was able to, woman to woman, human to human, I wasn't a lone number. I was a person and she loved my product. And I said to her, you know, with tears in my eyes, I will pay back every cent of this loan. And I promise you that I will, I will you know, if I had to sell everything I own, but please don't let me end my business today. Give me a shot. And she did. We meet thousands of people over the course of our lives, sometimes as many as 80,000. But of those tens of thousands, how many actually change our lives? How many can we look back and say, they're the one who changed everything? Through this series, we're going to talk to female founders, entrepreneurs, and leaders about who it was who changed everything for them. Kendra Scott is the founder of the jewelry and lifestyle brand of the same name. She first started making jewelry out of her bedroom in Austin, Texas in 2002 when she couldn't find color gemstone jewelry that she could afford. Kendra has been an entrepreneur nearly her entire adult life. I had a hat company that I started when I was 19 years old, if you can believe it. I really had hoped that everybody would wear hats again like the 40s. And unfortunately, that wasn't the case. And after five years of struggling to keep, I had a hat store, a retail store, and a really small online business. Uh, I just couldn't do it. And that business failed. And I just remember thinking at that point, you know, that I didn't think I would ever be a success. I felt so down, so bad about myself. But looking back in retrospect, that little hat business was truly the best education I could have ever had to get me to the next thing that was gonna happen in my life, which was Kendra Scott Jewelry. How did you go from hats to jewelry? What was funny is in my store, I realized that you know not everybody might want a hat when they come in. And I loved jewelry so much. And I took some jewelry making courses at a local beach shop. Uh, then I took a, a, a course at a, a community college uh, for jewelry making and design and started making some pieces in my little hat business. My jewelry would fly out of the case the day I would put it in the store. Uh, and that's what customers wanted. And the, my future was right there in front of me but I was so focused on hats after I closed the hat box, they would call me and say, Kendra, we want a matching pair of earrings for that necklace I bought in your store. They weren't asking about the hats, they were asking about the jewelry. And so it really triggered me to have to continue to design and make those pieces, but then also think, hey, maybe there's something here that I wasn't paying attention to. And so Kendra began building her jewelry company. She started it as a wholesale fashion brand, selling through established retailers before going direct to consumers. Nobody gave me VC money. I went out so many times to try to raise capital. Uh, a Texas girl doing a fashion brand, um, you know, that wasn't even a college graduate, that had a failed business prior, that's not exactly super sexy to investors. So I wasn't able to, to get that VC money that I wanted, so I did everything on debt. I signed everything I had for collateral, and I paid my note on time. I, I thought I was doing all the right things. But when the recession hit, because I was in jewelry and fashion, the bank thought that we were a high risk loan. And they called my loan and said, you have this many days to pay it off. Well, I didn't have that money in the bank and I was a single mom and I didn't know how I was going to do this. She was turned down by bank after bank until finally someone recommended that she meet with Carrie Hall at Texas Capital Bank. Carrie took on the $700,000 line of credit that Kendra needed. And crucially, she bought into Kendra's vision for the business's future. I'm curious though, just take us back to the immediate days after she decided to take on the loan. From that next day, business at Kendra Scott changed forever. I remember getting up that day and meeting with my team and saying, which was a small team, I think there was you know, seven or eight of us at the time, saying, look, this is crazy, this plan I have you know, uh, that I wanna do. I want us to change how we're doing business completely. 
But if we're gonna come out of this recession, we can't rely on buyers or store owners to tell our story or to sell our products. We have to connect with the customer one-on-one. -on -one. And I knew it could not fail. Like at this point, we were all in. And no matter what, we were gonna have to figure out how to make this work. And so many lessons of my first failure were such gifts during this period. On a shoestring budget, Kendra built her store, maxing out credit cards, personally guaranteeing leases, calling friends for favors, and even laying down flooring herself. But the new direct-to-consumer approach worked and customers flocked to the shop. Today, Kendra Scott Jewelry has more than 100 brick and mortar locations around the country. As women, sometimes we're, um, we think that being a mother makes us less than when we're in a career or running a business. And we're in a place where women can do it all. They can have an amazing career, they can have an amazing business, and they can be an amazing mother. Making it a priority is really important, and Carrie was all of those things. She is a mother, she's an amazing businesswoman, uh, she runs a bank, right? And she's, she was all of those things, and so having that relatability gave us already a singular voice of understanding. I think, you know, we've got it in our minds that if you ask somebody for help, that, that shows weakness. And I always say to me, that is the greatest sign of strength. If I didn't go to Carrie Hall, if I was too scared or I thought that, you know, she would think I was, you know, whatever, right? I wouldn't be here today. And people innately want to help other people. It is part of our human spirit.